Uh, I'm probably the, uh, the youngest uh, speaker of our uh, four pre speakers in, in this session, but I have to speak about aging. Uh, I think I, I start to uh, provide HIV care since 25 years earlier. Uh, I'm now growing old with our patients. And I train as an infectious disease specialist. So I'm not the, uh, a geriatrician, but uh, I think over the past two uh, decades, I found out that it's, it is very imperative for us as an HIV treating physician to become familiar with uh, geriatric medicine. And these are my disclosures. Um, as you have heard uh, Professor Kia and, and Professor Oka uh, talk th this morning, the mortality rate with the uh, introduction of uh, combination antiretroviral th therapy has been declined, regardless of the, uh, the, the uh, resource status uh, over, o o uh, all over the world, uh, as long as the antiretroviral therapy uh, has become accessible to uh, patients in need. Um, in in Tahoe uh, study, they found the mortality rate has been lower less than 0.5 percent, and in in and in ACC uh, in Japan, the professor Oka told us that the, over the uh, past five uh, eight years, the uh, mortality rate has been less than five percent. So the patients are are uh, surviving the HIV infection. Um, but the, the, the cause of mortality has shifted from the <coughs> HIV AIDS related complication to uh, non HIV AIDS uh, related complication. In this uh, uh, Danish uh, nationwide cohort, uh, for uh, those individuals who were aged 50 years or older, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with time, their survival has been improving. Uh, this morning, Professor uh, Kia told us that in, in, uh, in Thailand, uh, their model projected that any individual who were aged 20 years or older uh, with the antiretroviral therapy, their life expectancy would be expected or projected to be 81 years old. Uh, but in this uh, Danish uh, study, they focus on those individuals who were older, older than 50 years old. But with time, you still could observe their, their improving uh, uh, survival status. But if they, they, they perform the secondary analysis, just look at, looking at those uh, HIV positive individuals who are aged 50 years or older and uh, well treated which was defined as uh, uh, with a CD count greater than 500, the virus load less than uh, 50, uh, 500 copies, and without any comorbidities. When they follow them, here you can see there's still a gap of survival about, of about eight years. So even they're treated very well, their survival seems to be a little bit uh, poorer than their HIV ne negative counterparts. But the study, here you can see, it was uh, performed between 2006 and, and 2014, when the uh, early or uh, uh, treat or the concept has not been well implanted uh, among our HIV treating physicians. So many of those uh, included uh, patients may be uh, given ART uh, when the CT account uh, were low. So uh, there must be uh, something we can do better to improve the survival of those uh, patients who are aged 50 years of older. Uh, this morning, Professor Oka told us, shared with us uh, his experience with non-ACE uh, malignancy. And in this uh, DAD study, uh, they tried to uh, tease out and to look uh, deeper into the cause of mortality uh, over the uh, study period. 
here you can see the red indicating the AIDS related mortality. The proportion has been sort of uh, declining. But you could see, oh no. The uh, cardiovascular related mortality has been uh, peaked in about 2001 and two, and then subsequently declined. But it, you can see here, the non ACE related cancer related mortality, the proportion was increasing, suggesting that it will play an, an increasingly important role in our uh, HIV care. And in the uh, Netherlands, uh, they, they project that uh, by the year 2030, at least 70% of those HIV positive individuals will be age 50 years of older. And probably you have heard Professor Oka told us that in their center, 34 to 35 percent of patients uh, seeking care in their center are now 50 years of older. So that's really uh, becoming an in, in pr uh, pressing issue for our HIV uh, care providers. Uh, because of the increasing uh, proportion of individuals who are, are older, their uh, comorbidities will become uh, more common, and uh, uh, in terms of the frequency, so numbers of the comorbidity will be uh, much, much more common than their uh, HIV uh, unaffected counterpart. So there are uh, several challenges to uh, our HIV positive individual who are now aging. Uh, but instead of just uh, talking about the, the individuals who are already HIV positive. We also have to also take into consideration the HIV uninfected individuals who are at risk for HIV transmission and who are also aging. Our, preventing, our prevention of testing strategies or we did not prioritize the aging population as a risk or so-called uh, key population. So the message uh, regarding prevention or testing may not uh, deliver to those individuals who are now aging. So those aging population will be at a, a greater risk uh, of a late presentation when their HIV infection uh, is diagnosed. And once they become infected, I mean those uh, aging population, once they become infected, uh, despite the uh, early initi initiation of antiretroviral therapy, they are uh, less likely to uh, regain their uh, immune uh, function compared with the uh, uh, younger population. And as uh, we all know that the aging population, they have uh, much more comorbidity uh, just uh, Professor uh, uh, David Beck just, uh, just alluded to you. So they are, they are more likely to take uh, uh, polypharmacies and they are running a higher risk for drug-drug interaction. And uh, we as HIV treating physicians, we like to treat disease, but we may not be familiar with the idea of evaluating the function of our patients. So there are uh, four geriatricians, they already get used to evaluate the, uh, the frailty status of our patients or their uh, uh, functional decline of those uh, geriatric uh, in, uh, patients. But to our uh, HIV treated physicians, such kind of uh, concept may be new. So that's uh, something we uh, still have to learn. So um, we all know there are many barriers to uh, so-called successful aging. So it's really an important issue. And we all know that HIV infection 
and antiretroviral therapy would have a long-term uh, adverse effects on numerous uh, aspects of uh, health. For example, the aging and frailty, and uh, their mental health. Uh, several of our uh, attendees uh, also uh, raised this question about the mental health issue. But I didn't have uh, much time to, to talk about, on this. I would just focus on those uh, uh, disease that uh, uh, we probably for uh, our HIV treating physicians who are much more uh, familiar with. For example, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and bone disease, and, and renal disease. In this uh, French study, uh, the uh, prevalence of uh, HIV positive individuals who are aged 50 years or older increased from 20% to 60 in 2004 to uh, 62% in 2014. So when, they, when those uh, included subjects are aging, you can see there are almost all those uh, comorbidities uh, the investigators are looking at, the prevalence also increased significantly. For example, dyslipidemia, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, fracture, CKD or CVD, the prevalence, all of those prevalences uh, were increased, increasing significantly uh, in, during this uh, two study period. And, and here you can see this, uh, this uh, data were uh, from uh, uh, Japanese uh, researchers and, and Professor uh, 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 Professor Beck also alluded to, uh, referred to this uh, published paper. And they identified uh, 1,445 uh, patients from the hospital claims data, and also identified another, uh, for each individual, they identified 10 control, and trying to evaluate, uh, uh, to, to compare the prevalence of uh, different uh, uh, comorbidities between these two groups. And here you can see almost all those uh, uh, comorbidities, they, they're uh, of interest. Uh, uh, they're, uh, in, they're, they're uh, much more uh, frequent uh, among HIV uh, positive individuals, except for uh, cancers or uh, uh, vascular diseases. And, and if you uh, look at the uh, different age group, those comorbidities, some of those com comorbidities really diverge uh, more significantly uh, with the age aging population. And for example, here you can see the lipid disorder uh, with the uh, aging population. The HIV positive individual would even have even higher uh, prevalence of uh, lipid disorder. But uh, for this uh, study population, here you can see that almost 42% of those uh, individuals were receiving protease inhibitor uh, containing regimens. And we, as we all know that protease inhibitors were, are more likely to uh, cause hyperlipidemia than uh, for example, our integrase inhibitors. So probably that, that would uh, accentuate uh, the problem of hyperlipidemia in, in this aging population. And because of these uh, uh, comorbidities, uh, those individuals were more likely to have a, the problem of, uh, with uh, polypharmacies. Sorry. I didn't. Oh. It doesn't work. Yeah. Here yeah, you can see they uh, they try to compare the HIV positive individuals and and with the HIV negative individuals. They all identify those uh, uh, patients from the uh, same hospital uh, claims data, and in, and for those individuals who have two or more comorbidities, the uh, percentage of those individuals who are age 50 to 55 will be uh, significantly uh, greater than 
uh, their counterpart of the same age group. So suggesting that this is a uh, uh, phenomena is not only observed in, in Western countries, it is also observed in uh, Asia Pacific region. Similar data also were uh, generated by the Tahoe uh, study. So they, there are uh, several factors that have been uh, postulated or proposed to uh, cause or to be related to the uh, uh, increased non-ACE comorbidity uh, among our HIV positive individuals. Of course, aging, uh, chronological, chronological aging is something that we are not able to modify. But there are several modifiable factors that may contribute to the non-ACE comorbidities. Uh, such as uh, ART toxicity, uh, HCV, obesity, exercise, diet, and smoking. Um, we provide ART to treat uh, HIV infection and, and with the hope of achieving sustained viral suppression. We have DAA uh, to treat HCV. Uh, hoping to reduce the uh, uh, chronic inflammation that caused by uh, the viral infection. And, but several other factors may contribute to this epidemia, uh, insulin resistance, and also the decreased physical functioning. With those uh, conditions, that, we, uh, that may result in uh, increased uh, risk for end organ uh, disease. So uh, starting from uh, ART, that might contribute to the non-ACE-related uh, uh, comorbidities. We all know that there are several uh, different antiretroviral agents. Uh, they may be, uh, have been shown to associate with uh, uh, several comorbidities. For example, TDF, that might increase the bone fracture and uh, increase the risk of uh, uh, renal disease. Uh, so. Um, what we can do is to choose a safer antiretroviral therapy for our patient or switch the current uh, regimen that might be harmful in the long term to uh, regimens that will be uh, 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 found to be uh, safer uh, uh, options. And in the DAD study, they found abacavir, uh, DDI, and long-term exposure to uh, protease inhibitors were associated with increased risk of myocardial infarction. And uh, uh, Professor Nishijima uh, and, and his colleagues uh, have done um, a series of studies showing that uh, long-term exposure to TDF would uh, increase the risk of uh, a rapid uh, worsening of their renal function compared with uh, individuals who were receiving abacavir or non-TDF regimens particularly among those individuals who had a lower body build. Uh, I think uh, in Asia Pacific region, it's not un uncommon for individuals with a lower BMI. When we give the individuals the, uh, the same dose of TDF, 300 milligrams, they were at risk for uh, developing uh, uh, bone and, and, and renal disease. And so, uh, over the uh, past several years, the meta-analysis and, and, and uh, some large data uh, analysis also demonstrated to us that uh, uh, HIV-positive individuals, regardless of their uh, gender, they are at higher risk of uh, developing uh, bone loss and, and subsequently uh, fractures. And the uh, risk increasing, uh, increased with the uh, age. So uh, when our patients are aging, their, their, their uh, uh, bone loss and fracture will be our uh, uh, primary interest in, in prevention or in, in, in terms of prevention or uh, in terms of uh, uh, intervention to delay the progression. And TDF has been shown to uh, the major uh, culprit for developing uh, uh, bone loss and fracture, uh, in addition to several uh, con traditional conventional factors associated with uh, rapid uh, bone loss, for example, lower BMI or uh, smoking, uh, chronic HCV infection. But this 
is a multifiable factor we uh, have to take into consideration. And other than the bone disease, we also know in, in this uh, MAX study, they found that HIV positive individuals has an almost fourfold higher risk of uh, developing diabetes. Uh, but I, I would like to draw your attention because this study was published in 2005. At that time, the most uh, common antiretroviral agent uh, used would be protease inhibitors and older version of nucleoside uh, reverse transcriptase inhibitors. All those older version of antiretroviral therapy, they, are, they have been uh, shown to increase the, the risk of uh, insulin resistance and, and diabetes uh, managers. So, um, with uh, increasing uh, age, there are our HIV positive individuals uh, having a higher uh, prevalence of hypertension and dyslipidemia. So, it is not un unexpected our HIV positive patients, given the higher risk of hyperlipidemia, hypertension, diabetes. So all those factors will be accumulating into increased risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases. In this uh, Tahoe study, they also shown uh, the increase, uh, the potential uh, increase uh, risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases. For example, in, in, in this study, those individuals who were age 50 years older had a uh, much uh, rapid increase in, in the risk uh, for developing uh, cardiovascular diseases. And let's talk about, uh, talk about the uh, lung age defining uh, cancer. This study uh, was recently published. Uh, they, they investigated, the investigator using, uh, used the, uh, the data, the US data, trying to uh, look at the, the evolution of the proportion of cancer uh, encountered among our HIV positive patients. Uh, here you can see, they project that in 2030, a great majority of non ace related malignancies, uh, the, uh, the great majority of those cancers were, 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 caught, were, uh, were of the uh, non ace uh, defining cancer, uh, particularly among those uh, age 54, uh, 40, uh, 45 years or older. And what, what are those cancers? In 2010, you can see those ACE defining cancers such as uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma and Kaposi sarcoma uh, continue to uh, account for a significant proportion of those cancers diagnosed in 2010. But with the early antiretroviral therapy and treat all, in 2030, those two cancers have shrinked uh, in the proportion. Instead, uh, the prostate cancer, lung cancer, and liver cancer, they are now, uh, they would uh, expect it to uh, account for a significant proportion. Uh, but I think the, in Asia Pacific region, uh, we still uh, have to have our own data. So uh, as uh, we have heard from Professor Oka, uh, probably in the different countries because of the uh, uh, different exposure risk, uh, the, can, the spectrum of the cancer, a non ACE uh, cancer, will be uh, sort of uh, different. So we still have to uh, look at uh, what we, ha we, we might have in the future. Last but not least, the weight gain. Uh, it's an epidemic, weight gain, particularly in Western countries. That weight, weight gain will increase the risk of insulin resistance, which might also uh, contribute to the comorbidities. I've just uh, uh, mentioned. We are now talking about integrase inhibitor, but a recent study suggests the integrase inhibitors, particularly dorotegravir, would, in would uh, increase the risk of weight gain. In this study, the uh, NIA core study, uh, with the exposure of dorotegravir for uh, as short as two years, the weight gain of six uh, kilogram was observed. So whether weight gain is a blessing suggesting that return to health or it would, would be, become a curse for our HIV-positive individuals who already have achieved a good viral suppression. 
uh, remain uh, a, um, a, a topic that we really have to uh, concern about. So uh, how, how can we uh, achieve successful aging among our HIV positive individuals uh, in this modern uh, HIV uh, treatment era? So I think uh, there are several paths uh, to successful aging uh, we can choose. And these are modifiable factors. As I just mentioned, the, for the chronological age, we, are not, we, we could not do anything. But we can choose uh, better antiretroviral therapy. We can apply the state-of-art prevention and screening uh, strategies and, and try to sort of uh, ag 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 aggressively control the uh, risk factors that might increase the uh, risk for uh, comorbidities. And, and the other important issues is that we, we still have to address the, uh, the health care disparity uh, that might uh, exist in, in different countries. Uh, and this morning, our in, uh, attendee raised the question regarding the uh, immigrant or uh, migrant workers uh, in, in, in this uh, Asia-Pacific region. Once they become HIV positive, their access to HIV care and also the health care will be uh, uh, significantly uh, limited. So by starting ART earlier, uh, the start study showed us that yeah, uh, the risk for uh, ACE or serious ACE or non-ACE uh, uh, event would be significantly decreased, particularly among those who were uh, in the age a group of 50 years of older. So we can do something to, to change. And also for uh, uh, cancer, S starting art, uh, ART earlier could uh, prevent the development of uh, many uh, ACE-defining cancers. But whether starting ART earlier could prevent uh, those so-called non-ACE-related uh, cancers still uh, remains, remains to, to be seen. Uh, as uh, Professor Oka uh, shown this, showed us this morning that several rare non-ACE-related uh, cancers still occurred among those individuals who already have achieved uh, good viral suppression. And by uh, intensively uh, monitor, uh, and monitoring and, uh, uh, the, and, and, and modify our behavior, we probably could uh, prevent more uh, uh, cardiovascular events uh, among our HIV positive individuals. And increasing use of statin may also have a, a beneficial effect uh, in terms of the uh, uh, immune activation and regression of aortic uh, plaque. So uh, newer studies suggest that the, the HIV positive individuals I mean, the difference uh, in terms of the instance uh, of uh, cardiovascular events are now decreasing among uh, HIV positive individuals, suggesting that uh, the uh, recent uh, reduced MI rates will be like, will likely due to uh, our uh, uh, risk reduction uh, to prevent uh, CVD or uh, using uh, lipid friendly ART and, and reduce uh, the uh, immunosuppression. And by uh, optimize the uh, calcium or vitamin D intake and also the uh, lifestyle changes and uh, use of with phosphonate when needed might, might uh, uh, prevent or, or delay the, the progression of our bone loss. So, and, and also uh, we have since shown the TDF is associated with increased risk of, of uh, bone loss. So either we can use uh, two two drug regimen uh, just uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Jonathan or by switch the TDF to TAF, uh, we can uh, delay or prevent the progression of bone loss. So when you switch from the TDF to TAF, in this, in this uh, clinical trial, they found that the bone mineral density could increase by 2% at week uh, 48 and, and 96. Uh, if you add bisphosphonate, the, the, the percentage increase will even uh, double. So um, what, what we have learned in, in terms of the management of the comorbidities, uh, 
it is not too difficult to learn. But for HIV treating physicians, we have to learn from the scratch about how to comprehensively uh, assess our geriatric uh, patients. So that's a, there is just a, there was an editorial uh, indicating that uh, ge geriatric HIV medicine is born. So we have to learn how to assess our patients, not just uh, how to treat our patient the disease. We have to learn how to assess, how to examine. Uh, the function our patients uh, have and uh, how to uh, delay or prevent the progression of their uh, functional loss. So the epidemic appears to be growing, but how to uh, maintain their healthy status is something that we have to learn uh, as early as possible. Thank you. <laughs>